Traditions are important, and there are many traditions in medicine. There's a traditional history, a traditional examination, a traditional way of doing things. And traditions are often based from culture, but sometimes cultures change. Good boy, Jakey. How are you feeling today? Actually, we need to talk. We do? I'm fatigued. Fatigued? I believe the coughing and the wheezing during the night indicate a marked increase in my respiratory distress. Tapney? With subcostal recession. Subcostal recession. If you don't treat me now, my asthma will progress and I will need oxygen therapy. With eventual fatigue? And respiratory failure. We need to keep a close eye on this one, Dr Jenkins. Yes, of course. Being immersed in a children's emergency department may well come as a culture shock for some. Certainly, you will have to review your traditional approach to history and examination. No one talk can cover the complexities of paediatric history taking, examination and management. But remember, you have many of these skills already. Much of paediatric practice involves activating those skills, but in perhaps a slightly different sequence or order than you are used to. Above all in paediatrics, you must come to activate your senses. You can no longer just listen to histories. You must hear what children and their parents are telling you. You can no longer just observe. You must really look at the child in front of you. These are not glib catchphrases, but a fundamental process in the ability to be a holistic and comprehensive clinician. When listening to a parent, you must be amalgamating the symptoms they are giving you to help you make a diagnosis, as well as listening to the tone of their voice to determine the severity of that diagnosis, or at least the perceived severity of the diagnosis. Why is the mother worried about a fever? What was it about the child's breathing that caused grandma to panic? And when the father says, he seems okay, but, but what? What is it that the dad is really worried about? In some ways, we are all experts at paediatrics already. If you wander around your local shopping centre, you will be immersed in well children. (laughs) How are you? What about this child? You've got a car? Oh, look at that. Can I have a look at your hands? Can you show me your hands? He has an obvious illness, but isn't ill. And while some signs of being ill are obvious, others are more subtle and need to be actively sought out. Um, Is she suffering with any cough, cold? Yeah, she's got cough, it's not a nose. How long this is going on? It's developed overnight. Overnight only, okay. Uh, any temperature with this? She has a temperature, but she's got a and that's brought in there. One mechanism to learn is of risk stratification. You may have heard of the NICE traffic light chart. This applies to children who have a fever, but don't have an obvious source for that fever. The traffic light approach is often applied to all children, regardless of the ultimate diagnosis. What you are aiming to do is stratify a level of severity or risk, rather than be focused on only a concrete diagnosis. For children, these risk categories may change, sometimes dramatically quickly. So you must start using your eyes and ears to spot subtleties in breathing movements, for example, such as recession. Children can improve very rapidly as well. This is our grunting child after a single dose of a beta agonist. There is little point in just being a robot clerking machine. You have all the information you need to make a risk assessment of severity of illness, even if you aren't able to make a diagnosis. 
So in this new world, you really need to start using your eyes and ears to their full potential and adding in all the pieces of the jigsaw together. Hopefully what was once a matrix of seemingly impossible information will then start to coalesce into a meaningful pattern. Thank you for listening.